yes 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 what's up guys in this video i'm going to be going over this cog nano pad 2 i did an unboxing of this drum pad in my last video and um i'm just gonna give some of my thoughts on this drum pad so first of all for the price you're getting i think it's actually a good it's actually a good deal but you know for the fact that it's very very cheap it doesn't come like it's not the best build as you guys can see it's, it can easily break you can easily fit it in your pockets and if you can also look at it it's like one of the cons i see is like this place is always dipping see it's like a dip here so what i did was if you have like a like a flatter surface like a book or like a hardcover book you can place it on here and it's kind of less because when you're drumming on the drum pad it's kind of like affects the way it's it plays it kind of affects the way it plays so i use this book to just kind of balance it a bit i mean it still goes in when i press it but when i play there's a difference and i'm not going to go over this x and y pad i'll probably go over this in another video but basically this drum pad has an x y, x, y pad that you can use to control your midi notes you can just go up the scale and use freestyle and you know solo stuff and it has like the scales so you can pick the scales from you guys probably can't see this you probably can see it but like they, are, they have like you have like different skills that you can click from the pads chromatic c sharp major i don't even know if all this is correct because sometimes when i change the scale i don't think it's playing what exactly i wanted to play and there's also another editor that you can use to map all these pads to different keys like if you use arcade like me um, i mapped all my pads on my other drum pad to play all the notes that arcade can play so my, when i just click my drum pad i can just choose a preset and i use arcade like that so you can also do that with the software called cog editor it comes with it's on the website when you go when you search it up it's on the website so basically what i think about this it's not really the best pad in the world i saw a lot of reviews before i bought it so like the pad is not the best obviously this pad that i have right here this akai it actually feels better when you're playing when you press it you might not know but when you start playing you see what i'm saying like it's it's kind of just there it's kind of just there it's not you know it's not the smoothest play play you don't get the smoothest playback when you use it so you don't get the smoothest feel when you use it so let me demo some sounds in there for you guys let me demo how it feels to you so let me switch my screen and show you guys FL Studio. Okay, so I have FL Studio open up here, and basically, when you put the pad on, you see nano pad here, and you can enable this, so you can use it in FL Studio. And basically, I think it works best with Easy Drama or Addictive Drums. If you have like a drum VST, like Easy Drama or even FPC, you can use FPC. I think when I open up Easy Drama, it was already mapped directly, like the kick is here the the rim shot like all the parts like already mapped even npc when i put fpc fpc already had like some of the stuff already mapped like the kick is already here i don't know what preset it was on but it's almost pretty much the same as as when you see drama as you guys can see the kick is here and here the kick is here but the kick is here like it's supposed to be here but you know i don't know if you guys understand what i'm saying but it just automatically knows where the kick was and obviously you can still like remap all your pads on fpc just to get your fpc and your pad layout and save it as a preset in case you have multiple pads you know so but the feeling of the pad like like i said it's not the best compared to my akai mpd226 i still prefer to play my akai226 but the only reason why I wanted to get another drum pad was because of the double trigger. Sometimes the double trigger is so 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 annoying. Like you're playing one thing, you can turn and play one thing, but it's not the best. You have to play really really hard for you to like hit those notes. Or even when you play really hard, sometimes you just plays double. You know, but you know, for the price that we, that those these pads are going for, you can't really expect the the best quality. If you wanted to get a very very good pad, I think if you bought like a machine or um the ableton push pads we know everything has their own cons and pros there's no best pad in the world Every, everybody has something that is trash about them and what is good about them but this pad for the price i got this for like 
forty dollars. It was like thirty nine dollars, but if you add taxes and everything, it was about like forty two dollars when I bought it. So it's actually still. Some people say it was cheaper in years ago. I don't know. I don't know. This is my first time coming across this pad, and the reason why I got this pad was like I said, one, the double trigger. I just wanted to try something else and see if I would like it, and two, you know, I just want to like you know get more playing drums with with the drum pad, like. As a music producer, it's all these kind of gears. You don't necessarily need them, but you know, it's just a toy. Like you just have a toy in your studio that you can always play around. So you don't always have to click with your mouse, or you don't always have to press this with your keyboard. You know, it's just a toy that you can have in your studio. So the parts are kind of small compared to my. Akai MPD-226 I'm sorry guys, I'm always I'm gonna keep refer, um, referring to this pad because I know some of you might not have this Akai 226 um, but this is the only pad I have to compare with so I don't want anybody to come and say do you have this pad compared? No, no, no <laughs> I don't do gear reviews as much I'm just doing this because you know, this is what I have I only have the gear I have and eventually if if you guys like these videos like this if you guys, if you guys like videos like this who knows, I might start doing gear reviews but that's beside the point. But like I said, this part is way smaller than my Akai MPD-226. I don't know if you guys can see the difference. So this one, my Akai-226, if I'm playing, I can easily use two fingers. Like if I want to do like a drum roll, if I want to do like, you know, I can easily use two fingers. But here, I mean, you can still, but it's just a smaller room. And sometimes, like, it doesn't get to two fingers, two fingers. So you have to like actually use a lot of force. And you guys can see. So I'm not so skipping, but if I was doing on this, it would pick up everything. So it's just a bit of when you play it, the more you play it and get used to how the parts feel, the better you get at actually using your parts, you know. But that's that's about it. You can like I said, you can remap those parts with the cog software, um, assign it to different scenes. If you change the scene, it's gonna change like a different key on your pad. You can do all this manually. It also has like this hold feature and this gate. Like if you click on the pad, if you click on, if you click on the XY pad, but for, for, for this XY pad that has to work, you have to click on touch scale. So you can use this XY pad. So let's say you want to like a, so you can do a roll there. But the main, the main reason why I, I, I like using a drum pad is because sometimes if I want to do a drum roll, I can just, you know, just go randomly. Here you can see, I can't even do this. Like if I'm designing drum rolls, I'll just use my drum pad and... I mean, like I said, you can do it on your keyboard too, if you have a keyboard. If you have a keyboard, you can always do it on your keyboard, but... but see, it's not, it's not as fun as doing this. So if you have a drum pad, that's a good feature. Some people also use their MIDI keyboard, but, you know, I don't want to, like, wear out my MIDI keyboard, drumming on my MIDI keyboard every time, you know, that's why I got a drum pad. I know of people that their MIDI keyboard has gotten faulty just because they're using their MIDI keyboard to drums, to do the drums, but, you know, it doesn't really matter. If that's what you have, use what you have to get what you want, you know. Don't think this gear, you need to go out and buy it. So I recommend this. Not really, because, like I said, it has its cons too. It's not the best pad in the world. The features are not the greatest, you know. It's very, very flimsy, very, very cheap build. For that price, $40, come on. You can't really expect this much. And, guys, also, I want you guys to always, always also know this. If a company can reduce the price of a product drastically from like hundred dollars to seventy from hundred dollars to like forty dollars. Best believe that product was made less that was made less than hundred dollars. So it was even probably made less than forty dollars. So it's way, way, way cheap. This is a very, very cheap um drum pad compared to this. This one I bought this for like I bought this on sale. I think this one goes for about like either one hundred and 
fifty hundred. I'm not sure, but I, I bought this on sale for like hundred dollars. So compared to this, come on. <laughs> let me see. Let me let me let me just just say. Okay, MPD two two six. I think it's like about hundred and something dollars. The Akai MPD two two twenty six is like it's like one sixty nine dollars, but the original price was like two hundred and twenty. Two hundred twenty nine dollars, right? But I bought it for like one hundred. I think I think I bought for hundred dollars, you know. But comparing the original price, which is two two nine, to this, with the original price is like hundred seventy dollars, you could tell like the, there's a difference. But another thing that makes all these um, drum pads also reduce in prices, you know, they are making a lot of new drum pads. So if they make new products, they have to reduce the price of the old ones so that they can sell to you know. Well, yeah, that's beside it. So I recommend this pad. Probably not. <laughs> Maybe if you don't, if you never had the drum pad before and you just want to get one, I mean, you can always get this one and just play around till you buy another one. But if you want to buy a drum pad, I would recommend. Um, I mean, like, I mean, I'm still looking for the best drum pad, so I can't really say I would recommend one because most of these drum pads are very, very, very pricey. They are very expensive. If you want to get a very good drum pad, you probably spend from like two hundred dollars to about two thousand dollars if you want to get the uh, akai mpc you know those ones are like very expensive one thousand dollars range <laughs> who's going to spend that money on the drum pad right now you know well like i said don't focus on all this gear you know if you don't know how to use your your mouse if you don't know how to use your mouse you're, you're sleeping if you can't use this <laughs> and you're buying gear i don't know what to tell you but you know like i said if you have the money Go out and buy the gear you have fun you're a music producer you can invest in your gear you can invest in yourself you know just look at it as buying a toy for your own self to play around in the studio you know that's just my own take sometimes you don't want to just click in all the time you just want to have something on the fly that you can just play around and sometimes too i won't lie to you guys sometimes this gear they always spark up inspiration just because it's spark inspiration doesn't mean it's gonna make you a better producer you understand <laughs> Don't mix it up because i know a lot of people always be like oh you have this gear if i had this gear i'll make this music if i had a gear i'll make that kind of music it's all a lie guys because if you keep making an excuse if you don't even try your best to do what you can with what you what you have eventually when you get that gear you will still make another excuse i'm telling you guys this happens all the time so if you want to do something do it now with whatever you have so that whenever you get the thing that you're looking for you actually maximize it to the fullest potential all right guys thank you guys for watching and i'm out guys <laughs>